watching Let's Chat. Many area students are already back in school again, and that means it's time for City Scope Magazine's annual edition highlighting all things high school football. And when I say all things high school football, I don't think there's a statistic anywhere that's not covered in this one book. So who's the guy responsible for putting all of this together? It is George Mullinax. George, good to see you, and thanks so much for spending some time here with us. Well, thanks for having me here. Wow, this thing gets heavier and <laughs> <laughs> bigger every year. Um, just some of the overview on this. Number one, how many years have you been doing the high school football special? And number two, how many schools are you covering? Well, this is our 10th year publishing CityScope Magazine's annual high school football collector's edition. Right. And in this issue, we have 41 teams they compete in 15 different regions across nine different counties. Wow. And for every team, we show the coaches' comments, we show statistics, schedules, rosters, key players, everything you want to know about your favorite team. Yeah, I was looking at just some of the things that um, David and Jamaica were kind enough to sort of capsulize for me and it is simply amazing not only do you have the players the coaches you've also got the team schedules the rosters you got everything in here but the the, the I'm not even going to say the betting odds on the teams because you can't do that right. but how do you uh, how do you research something like this and assemble this much information each and every year well we have a great team of people that do it every year we start in March and we start to network with a variety of different sources that can help us with information associated with all the past high school football athletes. And then we work directly with all the coaches and all the booster clubs. And they, along with others in the community, help us put together the magazine. This has sort of turned into the um, holy grail, if you will, for all things concerning area high school football. This is kind of like the high school yearbook, if you would, except yeah. a lot more seems to be changing in this. And you said you started back in March, right? That's right. Wow. Um, what's the biggest challenge for you in putting this together? Well, I think everybody's busy. So to, to get in touch with people that can help us gather information that's accurate, and complete is always a challenge and but we have a great team and we're able to work with just a number of different people in the community to help pull it together any big surprises for the area high school football teams this year as far as one who might not have done so well last year that you think is going to be at the top this year well i don't think there's a lot of surprises a lot of seniors graduated this year there's um 11 new coaches this year of the 41 teams there's each 11 teams have new coaches but when you look at the, div the different divisions, it looks like South Pittsburgh has a great shot at winning their region. Right. Christian Heritage down in Dalton looks like they have a tremendous opportunity to win their region. And Tyner may surprise some people. All right. Tyner. <laughs> Tyner. That would be, that would be great. Yes. Uh, that would be great. I got a list of things here. Uh, you got the team profiles, the coaches' comments, the stats, the schedules, the rosters, the game day pictures, and more. And we've got a number of different slides here. This is Baylor. Tell us what your impression of the Baylor School is going to be this year. Well, Baylor has a new coach, uh, and so it'll be interesting to see how they do. Uh, they've lost to McCauley over the last, I think, five or six years, so it's right. a big year for them. And many people are, are, are anticipating that they will provide, uh, maybe have this year be their, their win over McCauley for the first time in a while. All right, what about Central? Central's got a lot of key players, good players, always been tough, and, and I think most people expect them to do well. They have done, uh, they've had the reputation over the years of being not that all of the teams aren't, but they've had the reputation of having that little extra cup full of guts that they take to the field. Not just the game field, but the practice field each and every day. Right. Well, you know, they, they're not called the Purple Pounders for anything. <laughs> <laughs> You're right about that. Um, and, of course, you got offense, you've got defense, you've also got special teams. Sure. Some yeah. of the folks highlighted in here for special teams include some pretty impressive kickers. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that, you know, that's one of the articles that we've done. We, we, we've uh, featured the best kickers to come out of our area going back to 1957. And uh, these are just terrific athletes. And for example, in 1957, Robert Cotton was his nickname, Letner, played at Meigs County, was, um, was you know, all state, then went on to play at UT, and he's famous for kicking the winning field goal 
that allowed the Tennessee Vols to beat Auburn in 1959 wow. and end their 24-game winning streak. And uh, I'm sure you have profiled in here the story of Pumpy Tudors, who played for Tennessee, that went on to become a Tennessee Highway Patrol officer. Yeah. We actually did a story on him yeah. a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the mascots. Can't forget the mascots, Jeez, right? It's one of my favorite stories. So most all of our teams have a, a story about a mascot that they've had over the years. and. Depending upon the enthusiasm of a student or the school administration, the mascots have kind of come and gone. But my favorite story is Boyd Buchanan and Captain Buck. And in the 1950s, a seventh grade basketball team, boys basketball team, was going to play Tennessee Temple. They right. had no uniforms, but they wanted to have a mascot. So they named themselves the Bucks after their, after their school founder. Well, that stuck. And then over the years, then Captain Buck emerged, and today there's a statue of Captain Buck <laughs> in the Boyd Buchanan Sports and Fitness Complex. And the stories like this go on and on throughout the pages of uh, this year's City Scope High School Football Special. And all proceeds from this, by the way, go to benefit the individual schools, and you can find out more. Check out the website. George, where can we find out more? Well, you can find out more. It'll be football.cityscopemag.com. Football.cityscopemag.com. We will talk to you over the coming weeks. George, thanks so much. Thank you. We will talk to you on the other side of this commercial break.